Good morning, everybody. Okay. I'm, uh, we are now live. Everybody want to take a seat? Find a seat? Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Are we enjoying that popular event? Welcome to the Miss uh, of Christ class, aka Entrepreneur for Christ. We've got Susie here at the helm today. And we're, we're going to cl open in prayer here as we get started here at Skyline. Thank you. Heavenly Father, I just thank you for your presence in this room, Lord, and the love that you spread amongst us. I thank you for your tender mercies every day and the blessings that you share with each one of the families represented here, Lord. I pray for those that aren't here, that they'll find us, that they'll come back to our class or reach out to us one way or another, either on Zoom or somewhere, Lord. And I just pray for what Susie's going to say today. She's a great speaker and teacher, and I know she's going to enlighten us. And I pray the Holy Spirit just guides us and gives us comfort. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Good morning. So this morning, I thought we would talk about ways to grow our businesses. We have everything in the room and a part of uh, EFC from startups, people thinking about starting their business, people established, people ready to go public. Um, we have a we have a variety. So let's talk about some of those elements of I'm in business, I'm wanting to be in business, but if I'm in business, where do I go from here? What's next? So hopefully we'll have some fun with this. Most of you know me, I've been here for about a year. But I have a consulting business now, and what I do largely is help people identify if they're starting a business, what that is, get it launched, and then where do you go from there? What's the next step? I'm here, but I want to be there, but can I even see what there is? So we're going to talk a lot about vision, which is one of my favorite topics. My background, I've been doing this for a long time. I was in professional services marketing with Ernst & Young for a long time on the East Coast which is a totally different animal than when I came to the West Coast, I went to work for a technology company and have been with them. They develop software and publish it, distribute it, and I'm now a consultant for that, no longer an employee. Um, background in account management, uh, relationship um, management with clients, which is one of my favorite things to do. And then working with retail and e-retail channels, uh, helping to businesses to expand by finding new ways to grow. So, entrepreneurial checklist. Uh, many things to get in place. Many of you have been through this whole checklist. Your business plan, uh, a mission statement. I bring that up because we're going to come back to the mission statement and how important that is if you're addressing growing your business. Financing, marketing strategies, a competitive analysis, accounting system, uh, tax IDs, licenses, website. And what was cool about this is I made this list and then I went back and I'm going to put names on this. Just think about this financing. Who do we have in here that's finance people? Bio's online today. Okay, he's one person in finance. We have, where's is Lou here? Lou does find selling businesses, marketing strategies, myself, Anton, there may be others, competitive analysis, the same. Accounting system, we have Sue Warden, who's amazing, spoke two weeks ago, just enlightened us all about 
dealing with the IRS last time she spoke. Um, tax IDs and licenses. We have uh, Andrew who's talked to us about getting your LLC, where to, what state, what are the advantages. Uh, website, we have Anton, who just built a beautiful website for my client. <laughs> SEO, SEM, et cetera. So, and uh, then I said, if you need help, call Carlos. <laughs> so the, we, we probably have two people, we're gonna talk about vision, but we probably have two people I know in here. There may be four, uh, but two people that I would reach out to if I need vision help, and that would be Carlos, and that would be our counselor, Craig. So there you go. Really interesting how much, uh, how much talent is sitting here. And I haven't mentioned several of you that have other talents, so. Okay, so what's next? How do you grow your business to the next level? So the first thing, the first option, the first thing I think we have to think about is vision. Uh, thinking beyond what you can see. And some of you may have been through what I call strategic planning, marketing planning sessions with a business before where you take a look at Here's where we are, here's where we want to go, and how the heck are we going to get there? That's a, and, and that's what it boils down to. And there's a whole uh, bunch of people that do that for a living. I just went through one for my nonprofit, and it's such a rich exercise because typically you come out on the other end with amazing new strategies, new growth strategies, and action steps that you, you otherwise would never have identified. So I'm a, big, I'm a big fan of that. You look at the strengths, weaknesses, profitability, losses, opportunities, um, your competitors. You look at all of that when you go through a strategic marketing session. So what is vision? There's a couple different uh, definitions. This is my favorite. The ability to think about or plan the future with imagination, wisdom. So what does wisdom make you think of? Anybody? Solomon. Solomon. Experience. What else? God's plan. God's plan. Where do we find so much about wisdom in the scriptures? Bible. Which book, Craig? Proverbs. 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 You get an A plus for that one. <laughs> but if you think if you think about it, so God's in God's a part of this then, isn't he? He's a part of this because if we have vision and we're thinking about growing our business, God can participate with us because he is all about wisdom. Um, the, so much in the Proverbs about wisdom, about how he laid the, the earth and with wisdom, he did this and with wisdom, the wise woman builds her house and wisdom and it's more precious than rubies and silver and gold, it's wisdom. So if we have the ability to have vision uh, to plan our future, with imagination and with, with vision, with, sorry, with wisdom. So who do you think of when you think of who has, in our modern era, who's had probably more vision to grow a business? Who, what people do you think of? Musk? Who else? Trump? Who else? Steve Jobs, Walt Disney, Jeff Bezos, okay? So speaking of Jeff Bezos, he's our example this morning. I'm a, this is the Amazon story. And I love this. I put the whole thing in here because I think it's notable. 1993, think about where you were in 1993. Okay. 1994, my first child was born. She's 28 years old. So 29 years ago, Bezos read that the internet was growing at a rate of 2,300% a year. That's a vision. Okay, what am I going to do about that? I have the data point. Now, what am I going to do about this? So he establishes, decides to establish his online bookstore. He had a brick and mortar store in Seattle. Just like any other brick and mortar store back in the day. This is what we all, you know, where we all shopped. But he said, well, the internet's growing. Let's go on to this online bookstore. And there's a couple of cool things in here. He and his wife both left their jobs. They had very high power jobs at DE Shaw. And one of the things that they did after putting some things together, uh, 
they found that what they were going to name their company. So we settled on Seattle instead of an Indian reservation near San Francisco, <laughs> trying to avoid taxes, smart guy. But then he was going to name it Catabra. I guess we'd all be ordering from Catabra today, but he, he bagged that because of the A, and it would be in searches, right, Anton? First in searches, so he went with the A. <laughs> And then he thought, I'm going to, he had with his vision, he said um, that he wanted his company to be the just like the Amazon, the largest, the largest online selection. So he had vision back. This is a bookstore, a brick and mortar bookstore right here, right here. And he's thinking way out here, way out there. So this is a real, it's a gift, people that can do this, obviously. He gave up a lot, his wife gave up a lot too move forward but i don't think you can grow your business think about where you are in your professional life without having some really really uh, deep vision about what you're going to do and, and how you might do it what you're going to give up so here's some of the others to learn from growing your business to the next level uh, i think walt disney is a really inspiring story um i think historic history can be really significant i have some other examples here of good, bad examples. Uh, growing up, I, I had an older brother that made every bad move you could possibly make. <laughs> and my my older sister and I would just watch him. And at the when I got by the time I got to high school, people would offer me, you know, oh, don't you want to come to the party with us and drink or do drugs? I'd say, no, I've really seen the really best good bad example my whole life. I don't I don't need to do that. You know, no thanks. That's not the way I want to go. Uh, mergers, why did some of the big eight accounting firms, why did they merge back in the day? Um, acquisitions, there's Amazon again, buying Whole Foods, and then partnerships. Uh, sometimes you can partner with a company and find new distribution channels for them. Mark, with his food company, that might be something he picks up some other sauces, takes them. Okay. So options to grow your business to the next level, networking. Here we are. I don't know about you, but Byron is working, doing some work for me. I mean, Anton has done work for me. This has been an amazing network, place where I found a lot of wisdom and information and knowledge. Um, Kim's story I have up there. Kim is one of my startup companies and she is using her network uh, of years of experience to leverage her business. So the first thing we had to do was put together a basic fact sheet, pitch sheet, whatever you want to call it, and go on a road trip and strategically meet with different people here and then on a road trip to talk about our business. Here's what I'm thinking. Here's what I want to do. What do you think? What's your input? You know, she's a golfer. So one of her mentors is was the ex- uh, PGA in the United States. That's uh, worth a road trip. Find out what he's thinking and what kind of coaching or input he would give her for her business. So she's not thinking here, she's thinking what you know, what can that look like going down the road. Um, so Disney, redefining your business mission, pivoting. This is a big deal. So the Walt Disney story he was in the business of making money, of making movies. That's how he defined his business, making movies. And he was really not very good at it. He, he had his first movie, which was Steamboat Willie. And Steamboat Willie, the first version, he had about 12 characters, and they all had a main role. A movie had been to a 12, 12 you know, characters that have a main role that's successful. It didn't work. And so refined it, refined it, finally got a decent one. He, I think at that point, he probably owed the bank his life. But um, he, he got one that worked. And then after that, Mickey Mouse became a major focus. And with that, he, he redefined his complete mission statement as not as making movies, but as entertaining America. And I think many of us grew up on really Sunday night, Walt Disney. What I found out in, in business, at some point in time, you're going to take on a partner, someone that you can talk with. When you do, 
you've got to have integrity. I, 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 I've done business before. Integrity is number one. Be honest. Because in business, you're going to fall into a bunny hole. It happens. But integrity will let you know what your options are to get out of it. I found if you have a partner or two or five or ten, make sure the integrity is there. They're honest. I'm not referring to religious people or non religious. I'm referring to just that aspect you'll find will save you a lot of problems. Excellent. Yes. And he did have integrity, going back to Disney. He had integrity. He just he had to redefine his business to be successful. And then expanding sales channels. So uh, back to Amazon. The other morning, I brought up Amazon to look at uh, some products there to check on them. And there was a message from the CEO. Did anybody see that? Anybody happen along? You saw it. Did you read it past the first teaser? Okay. So it was a teaser about Amazon's new venture into healthcare. And if you went and read the rest of it, you know, read more and you clicked on it, they now are partnering to provide health care to consumers. Talk about not missing out on the market. They're in food, now they're gonna help. <laughs> What's left? Uh, you know, I mean, there you go. <laughs> Confidence, okay, that'll be next. Yeah, far cry from a bookstore. Yeah. So um, expanding distribution back to mark products or service based, finding new channels for those. And you might start start selling on Amazon, you might start selling on Walmart.com, then maybe you're gonna say, well, you know what? Amazon's now over in India. Maybe that market's good. And I have a client that's testing that right now, let you know how that goes. Um Identify new markets, study your competitors. And that's a big deal. I use this software industry um, example because that's the, one of the spaces I work in a lot. And Adobe was the first to stop letting you download their software. Now you're going to have to subscribe. You know, pay for an annual subscription and it's in the cloud. So you can no longer have it on your, on your laptop. A lot of people are very nervous. They lost a ton of money making this move, but now it's caught up with them and they're doing fine. And then of course, here comes Microsoft and Intuit and they follow the same business model. So they, they do have, Microsoft has software you can download Windows, you can download Office, but, uh, and, and you can also download some versions of Intuit, but to its new 2023 version, only in the cloud. And that's where all the money is in SaaS. So if you're in the software industry, you want to be in SaaS, and that's where that's where the money is. You're going to get 10x of what you would get if you were uh, just computer-based download, or maybe a CD. What does SaaS mean? Software as a service. So it's subscription software. Yeah, software as a service. So here are the bad ones. <laughs> Asleep at the helm. Where's Kmart? Okay, done. IBM, oh my gosh. We used to call those guys the beamers when I worked for Ernst and Young. They were all, you know, big, they were a big deal. I have a story about Sears. In 1991, Sears had all the email address at the time, phone number, physical address, clients for over 100 years. They even had it, instead of add the cart, they called it add the basket. They had it everywhere, they did not have vision. That's it, they missed out. IBM the same way. They were just too slow. They had some things going on, they could have, they sold their, um, IBM sold their PC to Lenovo. And so they sold off that piece of business. And then they began to develop other business. They were just too slow. Everybody else was moving much quicker, more quickly than they were. They, they weren't used to having to move quickly. They weren't in the, that new environment. Wasn't, wasn't Polaroid a good example of that too? Yes, oh, yes, I, I believe I have Kodak here. There it is, yes. 
I mean, and Kodak is similar to what you said, Carlos. They had things in place. They could have gotten there. They they just look at it, they weren't ignorant of digital camera technology, but uh, they just wouldn't commit to the digital products. They would not commit. They remember Blockbuster come and gone. Yeah. There you go, Hollywood and Red Redbox took over, and then Netflix came on. And now we've got who oh, we have a plethora of streaming on X, Y, Z, and D, yeah, right? Uh -huh. Yeah, a lot, lot going on. So that's one thing to think about yourself. You cannot fall asleep. And one of the things I have learned to do is always watch your competitors and always watch what I call the big boys. So I'm working in the software space. What's Microsoft doing? What's Adobe doing? You know, what's Intuit doing? What's their next move? What are, what's an R&D for them? Snoop around, find out whatever you can. Chat with people that are part of that organization. What's Amazon doing? That's really hard to find out. We used to, I used to have people at Amazon I met with in Seattle. That all has gone away. Now you can only talk to people via email. No one will give you their cell phone numbers. They are buttoned down in terms of sharing information. But it used to, the big the, the big thing used to be that all of our packages would be delivered via drones. That was one of their big projects, and I don't know where that went. But that was supposed to have happened two, two years ago. So instead of all these high, probably high costly vans, it was going to be drones. Yeah, but there's there's of course problems with you know flying in the air and, and lanes and stuff like that. So I think there's a lot of liability. So it looks good on paper, but there are things a lot of problems. I think the idea is the van would pull up to an area and the drone would go out. <laughs> it we'll see, but you're right. I mean the yeah, they can interfere with lots of things in the logistics. Yeah, well logistics, yeah. Well and then there's the aspect of uh uh violating FAA airspace. Yeah, exactly. So don't go to sleep on your on your company, on your business. So best practices. So work smarter, uh, study the competition. And Anton, I went back to that presentation you made about the miners. You know, don't be out mining for gold, sell the picks and the shovels. <laughs> I mean, that's working smarter, right? Look for those opportunities. And Craig, when he gave a presentation about looking at the economy, and then you, you took it down to the level of San Diego and you talked about across the border and Mexico. <laughs> the things you shared that day, those are things that people should be studying about new opportunities for businesses, things we might be doing. It goes back to selling them the picks and the shovels, I think. That's at that level. Uh, work hard, discipline, mark the spark. Shout out to Mark. Yeah, persevere, right? Uh -huh. uh, and then the networking, going back to that again. And this is a big one, number four, mentors. So I want to tell you about a friend of mine who started a business. It's a, uh, she started a business one year ago. It's a mobile notary business. So she got everything set up in her van. The back of the van, you open the hatch and you've got a computer printer. You have places to put the papers when you print them out and all of that. She went and got her, cert her first level of being certified and started learning. And basically what you do is you take jobs from a signing service. They'll call you and say, when you go notarize these papers, there's a title exchange at this residence, here's the address, here's the time. That's how she started. So, you know, it's $75 of signing, you go and do the work, you begin to build your business. Then you start your networking and you start, you go to a conference, and you meet people and you learn best practices, which she did all of those things. And by the time she came around to this year, she is almost in triple digits of income. Wow, huh? Almost triple digits of income. And she now has met some, she's got a couple of science services who have partnered with her. She is their go-to person for San Diego. 
They know that she's smart. She's astute. If there's problems with the with the signing papers, she's reviewed them and she's caught them. She's made them correct and sent them back, then print them out, and then she's ready to go. And you never know who you're going to meet. She went to one signing for $75 and turned into a thousand dollar deal downtown San Diego with four people. The business commercial deal. And she just learned that you know you never turn something down, just go on to, to the next thing. But what's notable about the mentor part is that she has met uh, has been doing business with some people in Texas and she's become their go-to in San Diego. This person has just taken her under her wing, given her all this business, and she just told her they just finished they booked gross sales of about seven hundred fifty thousand dollars last year. And guess who she's going to go see and mentor with and talk about how she grew that business from where she is to 750. So don't miss that. We have people here that would mentor. I've had phone offers from you know people here to meet with me and help me. They'll help you. I know a lot of you are already meeting, but having a mentor in your industry or business is a huge thing. Yeah, it would help you really help you grow your business. And then resources, Byron's a great example. Shout out to you, Byron on Zoom. Um, <laughs> so he's a great one financially to help you with, with when you're making revenue, what to do with it, how to how to save it, and how to save taxes, which is huge. Um, number six, I like Anton and I talked about this a little while ago, and this is an old old saying. I I uh, I love it. It's who you hang out with when you're in business. And there's people that you can hang out with that can really take your time, absorb your energy, and, you, and it doesn't profit at all. I call them Cheerios. They sit in the bowl, they sop up the milk. That's it. Okay. So, so be, be careful not to hang out with Cheerios. And the other thing Carlos gave us when he spoke last time is people who are negative. People who are negative. I one of my people here, Kim, came back. She had we had just finished a lot of her information and material, and she had two or three people, who are important people in her life, tell her that they thought it was lousy. Her whole idea, her business concept, wasn't going to fly. It wasn't going to work. And I just said, hey, just don't hang out with them anymore. You know, I'm sorry. If one's a family member, I'm sorry, but just you know. Don't discuss your business with them anymore because yeah. that'll just pull you, like Carla says, just pull you down. Yeah. yeah, I mean, so many people, I mean, Walt Disney was told he was not creative. I mean, that's the best example I can give you. He wasn't creative, really. A famous Amos Cookies, one of my favorite stories. When he started, uh, Sugar was at its highest. Um, he went to little cookies, and at the time they were making big cookies and bigger and bigger, and the bigger the cookie, the better. Um, he picked a brick and mortar store that was considered a bad luck corner. It was off from Ventura Boulevard up in LA. And all these people were telling him, don't, 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 hey, Mr. Sugar's high. You're going the wrong size on cookies, rent. And famous Amos said to them, well, the time is right for me. And that's why I'm starting. The time is right for me. Tom and I always talk about the sense of urgency. It's interesting. Generally, the leader would be the person pushing, and you're trying to make it happen today. Um, what I've seen is a lot of people say, oh, my man, no, 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 we'll do it one day, we'll do it tomorrow. Do today what you can do today. That's great advice. That's wisdom. That's yeah. wisdom right there. And go back to the Proverbs. The sluggard sits there and pulls with it, and won't even pick up his hand to the dish to give himself a, a bite. I mean, get out there, get it done. Yeah. So constant research. Um, definitely, you want to be in there. Following your competition. Alert skipper at the helm. No sleeping skippers, okay? And then watching the big boys and that Amazon healthcare example. Look at them. They're moving into healthcare next. I mean, what are they, you know, they're strategists. What are they back there thinking of next? I mean, aside from, you know, Bezos has this space thing and other things, but Amazon staying in their lane. You know, what, what are they doing? Um, and what are the opportunities on Amazon for your businesses that you have?
knew we ran out of juice. So I put my laptop, I don't see it. Anyway, it's just the last one with any questions. Or anybody want to make comments or? Yeah. <laughs> Just a comment. Mark needs to keep his hands out of the cookie jar. <laughs> Thank you. My hand on the muffin jar. Whoever brought the goodies today, you you get an award. So thank you again. I took a business 101 class years ago. I won't say when. Yes, I do have a business. It's an online business. I could use every one of the topics that we talked about today. Not only from understanding your competitors, following your vision. I think all those steps are so important. Let's just remember that as we're contemplating our business or helping other people with their businesses, that God's got the reins and you got to pay attention to what he's guiding you and telling you also. And I've learned that because sometimes we have the resources and sometimes we just have to wait and just see what happens. So it's not always push forward. And sometimes there is a time of waiting and having patience. And with that, I'm going to have a speaker come up that I met last week from the Cerebral Palsy Foundation locally. And I know he has some good words to share with us. Not necessarily good words, but our nonprofit in, can you do me a favor because I'm not going to be able to oh. do that bag right there has fly, uh, flyers in it. Okay. So we are having a fundraiser Jan, uh, April 2nd, which is Sunday. Uh, obviously, there's a big gap in window there from the company, but it's uh, Sunday, April 2nd from 11 a.m. to 9 p.m. Um, over at the, I don't know how many people here like pizza, other than maybe Mark, uh, um, but it's at Surf Rider Pizza in La Mesa. And in order for us to be able to get the 15% from the company, you have to present this flyer with your bill. You can do takeout, but we will not get credit if you do Uber Eats or anything of the sort. We cannot get credit for that. So I'm gonna have her pass out these flyers to everybody. Yeah, so, and I'm gonna speak further on this the last Sunday in April. For our foundation, what we do is we provide resources, advocacy services, and education to people with disabilities. I come from 40 years of experience living life with cerebral palsy. And our foundation, we don't just support people with cerebral palsy, we support people with disabilities across the board and that expands to dis disabled vets as well that are struggling to find those resources or learn how to advocate for themselves. We try to get them to be their own advocate. Um, one of the phrases I always have is you don't know what you don't know. So if you don't know how to advocate for yourself, how can you advocate for yourself? If you don't know how to navigate the system, how can you navigate the system? So I hope you guys can make it. I know we need to get going, but I'll speak further in the last Sunday in April. Say your name again. James. This is James. Thanks, James. Next week, we're going to have Tom Shank. He's going to give us some info on his uh, say the, say the Tom uh, again. Actually, you, you all are going to be uh, my guinea pigs next week. Uh, I'm in the process of taking our company public along with my partner, Melandro Santos. So it's going to be the, it's going to be the first unveiling of our company to the public. Uh, we're in the process of getting our circular, what they call it, it's like an application to the SEC. So Craig's group, Craig's been very nice to ask me to speak. These are business people, politicians, and essentially I'm introducing our company. And basically at the end, I'm gonna say, 
if you have more questions, please stay in touch. And if you'd like to, I'm not going to do any kind of a sales pitch beyond that. Just say, talk to me. Um, so you're going to be the guinea pigs. And I, uh, and I look forward to any of your questions or comments. I, I hope that you'll give me tough questions because it will be a good prep for me and also to give you a sense as to what an investor pitch looks like. So All right. thank you very much. All right. <laughs> And I just want to remind you, you know, invite your friends to our Zoom. If they can't come here to Skyline for whatever reason, transportation reasons, um, make sure they get the Biz for Christ website. It's very important that we share this. Um, we may outgrow this room someday, but that's a good thing. Sure. And I think it's important for us just to let other Skyliners know too about this class. So without it, we will close closing prayer. Heavenly Father, I thank you for this good time we all could be together, Lord. I pray for um, Skyline, the church family, Lord, and our presence here in the community. I know there's so many people that are searching for churches now, now that we're out of this um, closed down phase, Lord. I just pray for the young children in the community and as they go back to school and and continue with their occupations and um, endeavors, Lord, that you'll just protect our children here, Lord. And bless our pastor. We just love Pastor Jeremy. Bless his family and the other pastors associated with Skyline here, Lord, and those that have gone before us. I know we're going to see them in heaven. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless right. you all. Have a good week. Oh,